Hi, George Romanich here. In today's video, I will introduce pressure as the vertical coordinate. This approach is quite often used in atmospheric sciences, in particular in the fields of uh, weather forecasting and numerical modeling, where researchers quite often use pressure or some functions of pressure as the vertical coordinate instead of geometric height, z. This methodology has certain benefits and the major benefit is that the density will disappear from the expressions of the horizontal components of the pressure gradient force. In this case, you will see the pressure gradient force in the horizontal direction is estimated as the gradient of geopotential. How this is achieved and how pressure can be used instead of geometric height will be demonstrated now. In our everyday life, we use three spatial coordinates and time as independent variables. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means that x, y, z and t is the reference frame that we use to position something in space x, y, z and time t. So we would say that, for example, temperature, pressure, wind vector, density and so on are some function, let's say f, of x, y, z and t. I will demonstrate in today's lecture that in atmospheric sciences it is often more convenient to use pressure as independent variable instead of geometric height z. And then in that case we would say that x, y, p and t are independent variables instead of z. And therefore, we would say that temperature, now instead of pressure, height, wind, vector, density, and so on, are some function, let's say g, of x, y, p, and t. We know that the pressure gradient force in the x direction is minus 1 over rho delta p over delta x. But this gradient is evaluated at z equal constant. I suggest you check my video on the pressure gradient force and you will see that the gradient delta p over delta x between two points is evaluated at z equal constant. Now we need to evaluate this horizontal partial derivative holding p constant instead of holding z constant because p is independent variable. Let's make a drawing of this situation. Here is the height z And here is, let's say, x-axis. And then we can generalize this to y-axis as well. And let's say I have two lines of constant pressure, just like so. This one is p, and this one is p plus delta p. Where notice that this delta p needs to be positive, because as we approaching to the surface, the pressure increases. Or in other words, pressure decreases with the height. Now, let's look at this triangle that has one side, delta x, and it has height, delta z. Using this drawing, we will analyze the gradient term delta p over delta x at constant height. Let's do that here. The gradient delta p over delta x in finite differences on this figure would be p plus delta p minus p over delta x. So this 
minus this over the distance delta x. And that is at constant, at constant height z. I will not put z equal constant, just this. But it means z equal constant. Well, that is equal this gradient over here accounting for the slope of this surface. And that would be p plus delta p minus p divided by delta z at constant x times delta z over delta x at constant p. The right hand side says that going along z equal constant is as going down along x equal constant and then accounting for the slope of this surface through delta z over delta x. By the way, the p equal constant lines are called isobars. Another way to explain this expression is using the mathematics of multiple variables and chain rule. Remember that in our new notation, height is dependent variable. So when we say that pressure is function of height, we need to know now that height is function of spatial coordinate x, its dependent variable. Therefore, mathematicians would write this, that pressure is function of z that in turn is function of x. And now if you apply chain rule, you want to differentiate this, then delta p over delta x will be delta p over delta z, delta z over delta x. That's the chain rule applied to this expression over here. So these are two alternative ways to explain this expression over here. Okay, now let's go back to the gradient analysis of this expression over here. If we look at this term over here and we let delta z tend to zero, then we will get that limit when delta z goes to zero of this expression, but notice that p and minus p will cancel, so I will get delta p over delta z, and for delta z going to zero, this becomes minus delta p over delta z. Now, I would assume some of you are saying, but why minus? I don't see any minus over here or here. Why is this minus in differential form? It's minus because, remember, that pressure is decreasing with height. So if we have delta z that is negative, which we had here, the, we are going from here to here, delta z is negative, then look, delta p is positive. So the sign of these two is uh, rather trend of these two is the opposite. If we increase height, we decrease pressure. If we decrease height, we increase pressure. And that's why there is minus sign over here. Now, if we do the same limit analysis of this expression over here, then I will, I will have that limit when delta x tends to zero, delta z over delta x, and that is equal, of course, just regular partial derivative delta z over delta x. You will notice that this one is evaluated at x equal constant and this one is evaluated while keeping p constant. So combining these two, we can see that the left side, delta p over delta x at constant height z is equal minus delta p over delta z at constant x times delta z 
over delta x at constant p. And of course, the same holds in the y direction. I'm not going to write it here, but if we replace x with the y, then the same argument holds. Now, let's combine this result with the pressure gradient force term over here. We will get that the pressure gradient force in the x direction is equal well, minus 1 over rho delta p over delta x at constant z, but we see that that is minus 1 over rho. I substitute this instead of the gradient. So that is minus delta p over delta z at constant x, delta z over delta x. And that will be, of course, minus and minus give plus. So it will be 1 over rho, delta p over delta z, delta z over delta x. But now the beauty of previous lectures, we can combine this with the hydrostatic equation that says delta p over delta z is equal minus rho g, where g is gravitational acceleration. And then the pressure gradient force in the x direction will be, I substitute this over here, will be minus rho g over rho delta z over delta x. Rho and rho cancels, and I get that this is equal minus g delta z over delta x. But you will kindly remember that the geopotential phi is defined as gz and therefore the pressure gradient force in the x direction when we use pressure as independent variable becomes minus delta phi over delta x. And this is big, big result. Just for completeness, I will write here, of course, that pressure gradient force in the y direction will consequently be minus delta phi over delta y. We see now that if we use pressure as the vertical coordinate, the horizontal pressure gradient force is measured by the gradient of the geopotential at constant pressure because these are evaluated at the lines of constant pressure. Extra important is the following. If we use pressure as the vertical coordinate, density no longer appears in the expressions for the pressure gradient force. And this is something very, very good because we do not like to use density in atmospheric sciences. Density is very difficult to measure directly, whereas pressure and geopotential are easy to measure. Hopefully, this video demonstrated that in atmospheric sciences, we do not use pressure as the vertical coordinate to be fancy and to try to, you know, go wild but there are certain benefits and you can see that the benefits, the major benefit at least, is the absence of density in the horizontal components of the pressure gradient force. Until next video, goodbye.